I want to say that I am very happy. I want to start this tonight. That this elderly man who's 80 some odd years old, about 84 years old, he isn't able to work no more. He served his time. And if he has the enthusiasm to scatter the message of Jesus Christ, I want to help him do it. God bless my brother. All right. Go ahead, brother. Come on. Amen. Hey, God bless each one. What are you going to start it with? I'm going to start some it with money. Huh? some money. All right. right. Good. <laughs> I'll help you start. All right, so that's fine. Amen. God bless, God bless you. you. Go right ahead, gentlemen. Mm-hmm. You want to? Uh, just I want him to say a word. Right. Come here, brother, Congressman. This is the former Congressman of the United States. One time, one of the greatest men in our nation. God, he was crippled for many, many years. Sixty-six years was healed here in this meeting. And I feel the great honor tonight to stand before a man or with a man like this, that these crutches supported him for all those years of his youth while he was being prayed for time after time to be healed. And at the age of about 84, Senator? Just 84. Now, 84 years young, speak three and four times a day, preach the gospel of the Christ who saved me, stood by me on bed seven years and made me happy, and then took me off of the crutches that I had used for 59 years, and now glory to God I will. Praise the Lord. And you know what this offering is for? He's not able to send this testimony around the country. He's, he can't do it. He's aged and he has no income. This year offering is to help him send this to all the big man, rulers and so forth of the nation. God bless our gallant brother. I want to give him a, this welcome here to anywhere in the nation that I have meetings or in the world. I'd be very happy to see Congressman Upshaw. Come and stand by me at the platform, Howard, sir. Remember, I'm sending this folder to every congressman and senator, the president and his wife, now sending it this week to the King of England, for whom he prayed, Winston Churchill, and I'm going to send one to Joseph Stalin. God have mercy. Amen. 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 Good evening. I am happy to be out here again tonight. And the representative name of our Lord Jesus Christ and his great mercy for us. And I'm sorry that this is the last night because you're so good and nice to me. To I, I'd like to stay with you, but I, it, I have need. Thank you, Sister dear. And uh, it, I have need to go somewhere else with the gospel. And I trust that our Lord has done something here in the, the meeting that has given all you people a sufficient faith to believe in him and to love him all your days of your life. I realize that there is many here that's listening to me now that I will probably never see no more on this earth. This will be our probably our last meeting time, this side of glory. And I want to have this appointment with each one of you, that if you shall go before I do, that I believe the Bible statement of the Lord Jesus Christ is true. I believe all that the Bible says is true, that there will be a resurrection of the dead. And that those who, those which are waiting shall be changed and made a body like his and will be caught up together to meet him in the air and forever be with the Lord in the air. I trust by God's grace to meet all of you there. May God grant that we can all 
meet and be there together in that great glorious time. I know that our Lord has been very gracious to us this week and the weeks that we have served him here. And he's been to us joy and peace and health and strength. And I, I believe that God will do great things for us tonight here in the midst of his people that he will do great for us tonight. I want to say that a young minister, Mr. Cain, I believe it's, if I'm not mistaken, Paul Cain, is going to continue the revival on beginning tomorrow night at the regular time, I guess, of 7.30. You're all accordingly accordingly invited out to Brother King's meeting. And I don't know just when that Brother Freeman, uh, William Freeman, I do not know Brother Freeman, I know of him, but I have a love for Brother Freeman, and he's having a tent meeting uh, here in the city, and I don't know just when he's going to close his services. And then I hear that they have the prayer services for the sick at the temple the Angelus Temple, and many other little places in the city is having prayer for the sick. And I, I trust that God will do great wonders for you all while I am gone. And especially save all the lost, and that they might find peace with God. Now, God will grant these things to us if we'll have faith and believe him. Now, then, this coming Tuesday, we started Grants Pass, Oregon, and we're to be there for about five or six nights. Then on the Apache Indian Reservation for two nights after that. Of course, that's just for the Indians up there. I shall never forget the last time up there the simple faith of the people. And then we come right back to Orange between, uh, I believe I have a correction in that. What is the, uh, between the... Between Santa Ana and Costa Mesa. Between Santa Ana and Costa Mesa. It's out there on the Southern California Bible School grounds. The Southern California Bible School grounds will begin June the 4th. You're all accordingly invited. Then I go north, and from there to Africa, India, Jerusalem, and I trust that by God's grace that some glorious day that I'll be able to come back here again to see you all. And thank you very much. And thank you. And I... I pray that God will bless you all and keep you in health and strength until we meet. And if some of us do go out, well, let's remember our Lord that he and his kingdom and believing that he will bring us together again and we won't be praying for the sick then, for there will be no sick there. That'll, that'll be marvelous. And I'm away and overseas among the peoples. Uh, certainly solicit tonight an interest in your prayers that you will pray for me sincerely with all your heart until Jesus comes. Pray for me. And now I want to say to Brother Cop of the Tabernacle and the Sister Cop that I appreciate their Welcome to me to this tabernacle this time, and they've invited me back again, and I certainly appreciate that with all my heart, and to all the cooperating ministers that's cooperating in here, and you who've come in to help us, we're very thankful to you, and to this fine group of ushers and so forth, we're just so grateful to you also. And to all the peoples 
to each one of you that's given me a little presence. I've seen them every one, and thank God for every one. A brother recently, when I was here before, understanding that I like to hunt and was going over to Africa, and the, when I was a little boy, I often wondered if I could even get a book to read about from there, and now the Lord is going to take me over there, and after all the services is over, they're going to take me hunting. And a brother here gave me a rifle, and I, I am very thankful the other day he gave me the cleaning rod and things to him. Oh, I just pray that God will bless him. And some brother gave me to go over the other day a, a box of fishing flies and things, for he knew that there was good fishing over there. I appreciate that. He made them with his own hand. That might, that just seems real. Someone sent me some boxes of candy. One sent me this tie a chain the other day. And some of them sent me some ties in an envelope. Oh, you don't know how. I, I just can't get to you personally to say thank you. Brother here in the beginning of the service gave me a watch. He said, I have two, brother, and I don't need two. I'll give you one. So that, that's very lovely. And I appreciate that. And just to say thank you, that's so little. But I'll say this, God bless you, and that's much, you see. And, I, and I, you remember, your Heavenly Father knows just what you have done. And he said, in so much as you have done unto the least, that's me, of these little ones, you have done it unto me. And I'm sure God will reward you. Many of you have put in a portion of your living here to help pay the expense as we went along and in the love offering for Brother Hall and I. And we appreciate it with all of our heart. And in this, Brother Hall is a married man, has a church and a family. Mine, just everything that I don't have to live off of, just I have to live, I put it right into missionary and send it away. And so it will go for the glory of God that when that day comes, I, will, I want my record clear at that day that I have been a good steward over his welfare and done all that I know how to do to glorify his people by such as I had to do with. God bless you all. And now as the meeting starts in, I, I may not get a chance to say goodbye to you, or I, I do not, or I say it like this so long, <laughs> not goodbye, because <laughs> we'll be together forever. There is no goodbye. No. So I, I want to tell you just farewell for a while and hoping to get back again with you. And if I, the anointing gets down heavy and I don't get to say it, I want each one of you to know some of you. I haven't got to answer your letters yet because there's been hundreds of them. And send your letters right on home to any time for anointing cloth or anything. Just send it right on to Jeffersonville, Indiana. And I'll be glad to pray over the cloth. You don't have to send the cloth. I'll furnish that. Send it back to you. What I want to see is get well. Be happy and be saved and, and serve the Lord. That's what I, I want you to do. Now, God bless you all. I want to read some out of the scriptures tonight. For I will be speaking just a few, very few moments upon the word and for I feel that our Lord Jesus has already confirmed his word many, many times over and over again. And I want you to be the judge of these things. If, if God hasn't testified that I have told you the truth, that I, I believe that you know that, that I have told you the truth, that God has testified. Uh, of these things. Now, I want to read some out of the book of Matthew, the ninth chapter. I've just been in prayer practically all along, and I, the anointing of the Spirit is great upon me. It's, I don't have to wait for Him, for He's already here now, and I believe that He is going to do great things for us tonight. I prayed a while ago that our Heavenly Father would do more signs before the people tonight. And any night in the entire service, and 
that it might leave California in such a revival of a condition that there'd be an old-fashioned revival go from boundary to boundary of, of the country here. And I pray that it'll continue on and on as Brother King and these other ministers are ministering to the people to the country. Now, in the ninth chapter of St. Matthew, beginning at the 27th verse, I want to read about three places in the scriptures and then testify just a moment and then we shall go right into the prayer line. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying, saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was coming to the house, the blind man came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe ye that I am able to do this? They said unto him, Yea, Lord. Then touched he their eyes, saying, According to your faith, be it unto you. And their eyes were open, and Jesus strictly charged them, <clears throat> saying, See that no man knoweth it. But they, when they were departed, spread abroad his fame in all that country. And as they went out, behold, they brought unto him a dumb man possessed with a devil. And when the devil was cast out, the dumb spake. And the multitude marveled, saying it was never so seen in Israel. See what Jesus said a dumb was? It was a devil. Not just a dead vocal cards, but a devil had done that. But the Pharisees said, He casts out devils through the prince of the devils. They thought he was a mind reader or a spiritualist or something. But Jesus had the will of the Father to fulfill the 35th verse, and Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now, over in the fourth chapter of St. John, I wish to read a few verses, beginning with the fourteenth verse. But whosoever drinks of this water, drinketh of this water. If you notice, it wasn't just take a drink and walk away and forgive about it. It's drinketh. That's continuation. Keep drinking. But whosoever drinketh of this water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him well of water springing up into everlasting life. Drinking all the times. This is a conversation with the Samaritan woman. The woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Jesus said unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou hast is not thy husband, in that thou sayest true. The woman said unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. The fourteenth chapter of St. John, the twelfth verse. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Can we bow our heads just a moment? Our Savior, we thank Thee tonight for these words. They are life unto us. My words are life, you say. They give life and light to those who hear and believe. And in believing, we have eternal life. For they are they which testify of You. And now, Father, we thank Thee that Thy Word has been made manifest to us through salvation, divine healing, and many other of the attributes of Thy death. 
and atoning at Calvary for our fall from Eden. And now, dear God, we thank Thee from the depths of our soul for this meeting and for all that it has meant to, to all of us. And we pray Thee, Father, that Thou will continue in this meeting. And as Thy servant goes somewhere else from tonight to minister to others, as Thou hast said, I must preach the gospel to others. I pray Thee, Father, to be with Brother King as he ministers on here in this platform. Help him, dear God, to preach with such great force and persuasion that men and women will come and give their hearts to Thee and be born again. And bless him that whoever he prays for, may they be healed. Bless the pastor, Brother Cop. Grant, Lord, that whoever he prays for may be healed, and who he speaks to may be saved. Not only he, Lord, but all the pastors and evangelists that's in the building tonight, wherever they preach or pray, may God answer their prayer. Bless Brother Freeman tonight in his meeting in the tent. I pray, Lord, that great signs and wonders will be done there. May his preaching and praying be the results of causing many to come to the Lord Jesus and be saved and healed. And all through the nations, bless all. Lord, we ask tonight to bless our nation, the most greatest and powerful nation of the world, the Joseph of Jacob's blessings, who has made his bow strong and trusted in the might of God. But we know it's time for the vine to come back over the wall again now. And we realize that we're at the end of the age. And this great, marvelous nation, starting out a few years ago to forsake God as a hog goes to its waller and a dog to its vomit, bringing in whiskey and putting it on the street corners and putting our young girls and boys in the bar rooms and bringing the vulgarity out of Hollywood here, the nest and depths of sin. Oh, eternal God, what else could we expect but judgment? When mercy is overstepped, then judgment must come. God, I pray that you'll draw your people together with the cords of love and bind their hearts together that soon when that Gabriel walks to the great banisters of eternity and sounds that trumpet, the approaching Christ, may your church be come together and go up in the air to meet you before these great judgments shall blast the earth with the curses of God. Oh, have mercy, dear God. There may be some in here, this may be their last night and last opportunity. Grant, Lord that they will be saved tonight and filled with thy spirit. May every sick person in here be healed tonight. Grant it, Lord. May there be such a scream go up, Lord, until tomorrow that the city will be awakened with great testimonies everywhere, and man may come a conscience of God and get away from this earthbound senses Move out into the realms of the supernatural and believe the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant it, Father. Anoint your servant tonight, O oh God. If I found favor with you, Lord, I pray that you'll send a double potion tonight. That it'll be that I'll not speak, but let the Holy Spirit speak in who I testify. And may in speaking, may great signs and wonders break forth, and may this whole audience break forth with that living water springing up like geysers out of the soul, Lord, that you told this Samaritan woman about. And may we lay our tired, weary souls at your feet tonight and drink until we bathe into the beauty of God, until we forget all about this bound existence and move out yonder into a place where the spheres beyond the stars where we can find favor with God and 
finds healing for our bodies and rest for our souls. Oh, God, hear my prayer as I sincerely plead with all my heart. In the name of thy beloved Son, Jesus, we ask it. Amen. We sing the song, Our Lord is Coming Back to Earth Again. I believe that He is coming back to earth again. And now, God bless you. And just for a few words, I have refrained from testimonies in the meeting this time because of the other time here. I thought I might walk back over a testimony. But a few moments ago, I was thinking of the testimony at the Indian Reservation. I shall never forget that. There was many thousands of the Apache Indians gathered out at San Carlos. And when I began to speak through an interpreter, while there was not many seemed to believe, an Indian is a person who is very strange. He just believes when he's convinced, and then he's convinced forever. And so I was speaking to them, and many seemed that they just listened, but never noticed very much what was going on. Then when the prayer line started and a few of them come, the first woman to come was a woman with a venereal disease, not because she was immoral, but because of the way she had to live. Now, I think if there's one thing that this nation has done, I, I'm an American. God knows that. There's a many of Branham, I probably flew over their graves in France and so forth four brothers in the last war and going in this, maybe a son too, shortly. And if it come to the colors tonight, I'd be happy to walk out and give my life freely like my brethren has who stained the soils of the foreign countries with their blood for this liberty that we have tonight. I, but if there's anything that I can think of that's put a stain on our flag is the way we've treated the Indian. That's right. We send billions of dollars to Russia for them to shoot it back at us. We send it to Japan for them to fix a war to shoot back at us. And our American Indian laying out here starving to death. That's not right. It's not right. And uh, there's nothing I could do about it. I wish we had more men in the Congress like sitting here. I'd take a trip up there and find out about it. But we, we, I'm so afraid it wouldn't work now. But... I think that they've certainly been treated wrong. And after all, this is their country. And we just come right in and push them out. And the reason that we come in and push them out is because they were disunified. One group was in they fighting among one another. And right now, listen, we're reaping what we sowed. We're getting disunity. Stir up. All right. It may take it a long time, but it comes home. Don't you never worry. Now, in their reservation that night, when this woman was told of her disease, of what she had, she looked at me so strangely when the interpreter told her what I said. Well, she wondered how I knew that. And he, she tried to tell her about what the, it was. And the woman was healed. The next coming through was a man. He had glaucomas to the eyes, which is very popular amongst the Indians. And he was healed. And the next coming by was a little girl. And at that time, I did not see the visions like I do now. It was in the early part of my ministry four years ago. I took hold of the little girl's hand. There was nothing to move. And I, I said, I do not know what's wrong with her. It's not a germ disease because it doesn't, I don't feel the reaction of a, the presence of another a germ besides the germ of life. And so she asked the lady, and the lady told her, said, her death, um, the fever, many years, make her that way. And uh, so I took the little thing in my arms, and I prayed, God, give me favor now. Do something that these people will understand. And when I got through, I, I knew she was healed, and I tried to get her to say something. She started mumbling off something. And I said to the interpreter, she was smiling. I said, oh, she'll speak better. I said, her speak heat good now. <laughs> so, 
And then they begin to notice. And the next one come through was a little boy. And you know how, now if there's an Indian setting here, I'm not saying this, no, my grandmother come off the Oklahoma reservations herself. So then, uh, their hair coarse. And I said, what's the matter with him? I, and she caught him by the top of the head, rough, you know. She pulled his little head back and his little eyes were setting right in like that cross. And I looked at the little fellow and I took him up my arms and I laid his little head over on my shoulder and I started praying. After I felt the Holy Spirit had healed him, I asked him to raise her head and I turned him around. And his little old eyes were just as perfect. I had him rolling his eye. And all the people began screaming and it looked like a great dust storm coming up. And like a stampede and they put their hands around like this and I had a prayer line then. Oh my. And it's just standing everywhere. And coming to me was uh, somebody, an old woman with crutches and made out of broomsticks. And she was trying to get to me. And there was some young people trying to get ahead of her. And Brother Moore and many of them was trying to put them back. After a while, she got to where I was. And I let her come up. She had a real wrinkled face and her hair hanging down, leather plaited in it. And when she finally got up to me, arthritis. And she was standing like that. And she looked up at me, poor old thing. The tears running down the big wrinkles like that. She looked at me just so pitiful. Took one crutch in her hand, tucked the other and handed him to me. Straightened up, walked right on off the platform. Just now that's all she needed. Simple faith. And then all great things is taking place is almost daylight, and I'm just barely holding up. And these Indians came through, wet, come up around their way. Now I asked the interpreter, I said, What's the matter with them? She said, they thought you were fake first. Said so they see that take place, they run out into the deserts and get their loved ones. The ford is 20 miles below here. Said so they just walking right through the river, coming on over and wading the river. And there stood a great big fella, great strapping looking fella. His lips is blue and he's just shivering. It's cold on that desert. And, and uh, he was just shivering like that. It's right near the mountains, you know, where San Carlos is perhaps. And, uh, and I looked, and he had a board. They didn't have stretchers and things like we have. But he had a board, and there was an old man laying on there, and he had a cross piece this way and one this, and he had his hands and his legs laying across, and he was shaking with palsy. He was old, turning gray. And I said to this big fellow, I said, You speak English? And he said, Little. And um, I said, Aren't you afraid you get pneumonia? I said, Well, wet like that? He said, Jesus Christ is take care of me. I bring my daddy. And I said, Oh. I said, You believe if I'll ask him, Jesus, to heal your daddy, he'll heal him? Yep. I said, Passed him through. He went by and I just laid my hand on him. I said, God bless you, my brother, and heal you. Passed right on through and I called another. In a few moments, I. I heard an awful scream going on. I looked, the old man had the board on his own shoulder, waving at everybody, <laughs> going along like that. Just as, what was it? Simple, childlike faith to believe. Now, see, we, we're very suspicious. <laughs> and we go to try to look in there and see if we can figure it out. That's where you lose. You can't figure God out. You've got to believe him. See, see. He that believeth, not he that can figure out, he that believeth, see. And so when they seen that the signs of God was brought into their midst with all their heart, not just going up and say, well, I, I kind of believe it, I, with all their heart, they just throw their heart open and that's what taking place. And my, I told them, I, they, some of them got around that I like to hunt. The reservation folks said, you know, my, they, some of them asked me, said, are you a hunter? I said, I like to hunt. And well, they go saddle their ponies right then <laughs> and take me hunting where I could catch turkeys with my hands almost. <laughs> they, they had, and many of them give up their superstitions and so forth and, and become saved. And we well, had a great time up there. And I'm to return back there in a few nights. Oh, I just wonder what it'll be when we get in this time. And many dope fiends and narcotics uh, users and so forth, everything just taking place in the meeting. And we're thankful for that. And now, 
he wants to be the same thing here in California. Not long ago, many of you know Captain Al Farrar, no doubt at all, the head of the juvenile on the G. Edgar Hoover uh, on juvenile. He was in France recently. He was in my meeting, and he was telling me, taking me out for a place, and was telling me how much he is seeking God. And he retires now in a little over a year, and he wants to go with me in my meetings. And, uh, and he was telling me, he said, I heard your sermon the other night, Brother Branham, about how that, that sometimes uh, people try to see if their children get so much education and they learn tap dancing and so forth. They're mindful of those things, but to know God. And he showed me on the map of the United States that some of our worst criminals come out of the high cultured, educated groups of people in society. They get so smart that they think they can outsmart the law. See? I listen. I'd rather my boy there know Jesus Christ and the forgiveness of sins. If he was so dumb, he didn't know his ABCs. That's right. I, I would rather he would do it. That's right. Now, I'm not trying to say your children should be dumb and ignorant or so forth. That's not. But, brother, education has been one of the biggest hindrance that the gospel of Jesus Christ has ever had. In the seminaries, it's reading, writing, and arithmetic, and some of them know more about God than a hot and tot knows about Egyptian night. Uh, you know that's true, and it's, it's all right to be educated. I don't want you to be literate, but well, the thing of it is, you put so much stress on that and not enough on Jesus, you see. That, that's it. Here's the one you want to speak of. And then when you get real smart, you say, oh, my doctor so-and-so knows more about it. Maybe he does. Caiaphasus ought to know Jesus, too, aren't they? And so ought the priest in them days. But they didn't know him. And so is it today. Now he's here, and he loves you all, and I want you all to be healed. I want every person in here to be healed tonight. And all along the lines here, you without prayer cards, you with or without prayer cards, I want you to believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is going to make you well. Be afraid. Jesus always said, fear not. Do not fear. Don't fear. Don't do that. If you do, then God can't work with you. And if you do believe, then God can work with you. Isn't that right? Now, have faith in God. I believe that's what Jesus said. Have faith in God. Now, how many has believed with all your heart? Let's see your hands. Way up now. Way up high. Now, how? Thank you. Now, how many of you has never been in our meetings before, one of my meetings? Let's see your hands in here. Oh, my. Each night, there's hundreds that never get into the meeting. Now, for the, a few nights, we have been trying to have uh, a meetings where we just call the people up and pray for them like the other brethren do. That is not exactly the, the, the gift that God gave me to do. He wanted me to pray for them, but these signs and wonders was to be committed to the people that they might see and believe. And now, Jesus said in the scriptures here, now when he was here on earth, he did not claim to be a healer. How many knows that's the truth? Jesus was not a divine healer. And if Jesus did not claim to be a divine healer, how much more ought we to claim not to be a divine healer? Jesus said, It's not me that doeth the works. It's my Father that dwelleth in me. He doeth the works. Is that right? Amen. Now, how many knows that's the truth? All right. St. John 14. All right. Now, Jesus, the only thing that he could do, I have St. John 5, 19. He passed by a pool where there was hundreds and hundreds of people laying crippled. And lame, halt, blind, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. Is that right? And he passed by and he healed one man who had an infirmity, maybe sugar diabetes, maybe TB, for 38 years. And he said, Would thou be made whole? He said, I have no one to put me in the water. When I'm coming, somebody steps down ahead of me. It's better off than I am. And I have no one to put me in the water. He said this. He said, Rise and take up thy bed and walk. Is that right? Amen. Now, the Jews questioned him. He said, Verily, verily, listen close now. Give me your attention. Verily, verily, I say unto you, 
the Son can do nothing in himself. But whatsoever things he sees the Father doing, that doeth the Son likewise. For what the Father does, he shows the Son. Is that right? St. John 5, 19. Something in that manner. I don't know where I was word by word, but that was the, the meaning of it. That whatsoever the Father doeth, that doeth the Son likewise. Now, Jesus plainly stated then that he could do nothing in himself, but at first he saw the Father showed him what the Father had done. Is that right? And then he went and done what the Father showed him to do. Is that correct? Did I make that clear? Now, a man came to him, quoting, and in my text tonight, or scripture reading, he sat by the well. And did you notice it was a long ways for him to go up to Samaria. He could have went around the mountain here to Jericho. But he had need to go by Samaria. I wonder why. Did you ever notice? It was miles out of the way to go up there. But he went by the way of Samaria. And it's about noontime, so he sent his disciples to get something to eat. You believe he knew what was going to happen? Certainly he did. And a woman came out. And so the woman, he began to talk to her. And he finally told her, said, go get your husband. And he, she said, I have none. And he said, you've had five. And the one you have now is not your husband. Is that right? She said, I perceive that you're a prophet. He told Nathaniel, he said, before Philip called you, you were under the tree. And Nathaniel said, you're the son of God, the king of Israel. He knows where two mules were standing hitched at two ways. Is that right? Where two ways met. He knows where a man would be packing a jug or in the street and make the upper room supper ready and so forth. He knew where there was a fish that had a coin in his mouth. Is that right? Now, St. John, the 14th chapter and 12th verse when he was leaving, he said, These things that I do shall you also and greater than this shall you do, for I go unto my Father. Not greater in quality, but greater in quantity. For no man could do any more than he did. He stopped nature. Oh, he just done everything. And no man could even raise his own body from the grave. Or God raised him up from the grave, rather. And done great things. He raised the dead. But now... He said that there would be a church in the last days, there'd be a former and latter rain would be pouring out together in the last days. I believe that we're living in that day. And I am one who's born out of season from you Pentecostal brethren. I was raised up in no church at all. When I was a little boy, this angel, this light who came over me and there down through my life, not knowing what it was, until I received the baptism of the Holy Ghost, and he called me to be one among you, to be with you. And I thank God for that privilege of, of giving me that opportunity. Now, I have been here, and I don't know when. I may never be able to get back again, but I hope that I will. But I have been here trying to declare to you that God has done these things to vindicate that what I'm telling you is the truth. Now, that isn't because that I am here. When I'm gone away from here, Jesus will be here just the same as he is when I'm here or anyone else will be here. He'll be here to heal the sick and to do just the same things that he could do any time. And if he was standing here tonight wearing my suit, my shoes, he could do no more for you than what he does right now. Do you believe that? Now... He said, I have greater testimony than John, for my Father testifies of me. Is that right? Now, the Father testified that uh, Jesus' testimony was true. Now, the Father will testify and has testified that I'm telling the truth about Jesus. Do you believe that? Now, God bless you. Now, uh, it's getting late, and I want to call the prayer line. And I want your undivided attention. Our Heavenly Father knows everything in this building. He knows every one of you. If you've ever had a bite to eat in this life, 
our Heavenly Father has given it to you. If you've ever breathed in your lungs, our Heavenly Father produced the air that you breathe. You owe him all things. And he can make known to you the things that you have done through your life. But to heal you now, he can do that through me. But to heal you, he can only do it through Christ, his Son. Now, I'm going to call a prayer line and just start calling a few at a time and pray for as many as I possibly can tonight. And I'm going to ask you to do me a favor. I'm going in to pray just in a few moments. And while I'm praying, so I talked myself right away from the anointing just a few moments ago, feeling the love for you and your pressure coming in, me trying to look away from you. So I want to be just a little more anointing than what it is that when I, when I call the line. And I want you, and you at standing, I feel sorry for you standing, and many on the outside, when we, I come up a while ago to pick up my little boy, there were people going away from the church. Now, I hope that after I fulfill this itinerary and come back from overseas, the next time that I come into the cities anywhere, I'm not coming just to stay a day or two. I want to come to I can stay until I'm finished, till God is finished. And, and then, thank you. <laughs> I want to stay until it is finished, and then I won't have any itinerary. I'll go home then and wait until our Heavenly Father tells me to go somewhere else. See? And then there's getting to be so many on the field, so many brother praying for the sick, and I trust that there'll be 25 go out of this meeting to pray for the sick everywhere. Let them go everywhere. But there's so many to and these major meetings until we're getting in one another's way, and I feel that I ought to move back and go over into Africa and places like that where there's no one at over there. And the people are helping me to go. So let us bow our heads now for prayer. Father, I've, I've almost tried to stall time tonight, knowing I dread leaving these people. They've been good to me, and I love them, and look out there and see once in a while they... While speaking, they'll wipe a tear from their eye when I say, I don't know whether I can be back again. And to hear say, if I can come back, and hear them applaud that they love me. And it's hard, Lord. I, I know what it was to you and, and how you loved yours to the end. God give all of us a love for each other unto the end. That we'll have love and confidence in each other and in thee until thou dost come and get us. And then may we live neighbors to each other in heaven. Or that we can just go down there the last night of the, the great supper. When we finish up earth's journey, you said, I'll drink more of the fruit of the vine. I eat and drink anew with you in my Father's kingdom. When we come there to that great wedding supper and we look across the table at one another. Oh, God, just a slip a little handshake over while the tears of joy rolls down our cheeks. The king come out in his beauty and wipe all the tears from our eyes then and say, don't cry. It's all over now. There'll never be no more healing campaigns up here. No more tired, restless nights. No more wheelchairs, graves, sickness. All for that great day. Then you'll say, enter into the joys of the Lord. Oh, I long to hear that at that day, Father. And now while we're here together and all of us longing the same thing, Make us true stewards. May we shape our lives by self-control that we'll know by the help of the Holy Spirit to have a full confidence that Jesus will say, Well done, my good and faithful servants, at that day. May we be upright and honest and true. May we be the kind of a Christian that would be a, a credit to any community. Granted, Lord, may we be men and women such as you could lay your hands upon and say, My servant, behold, this is my servant in whom I am delighted. I can send them. They'll go. They know how to speak and when to speak. And I can be with them. Oh, Father, grant that blessing to every one of us. Now, as your humble servant is to commit his part now into bringing forth the present living evidence of a risen Jesus Christ who rose some 1,900 years ago 
Father, may the angel of God who came to me as a little boy and has been with me down to my age, may he come tonight and anoint thy servant with great power that this audience will be illuminated with his great august being. May it sway over the building to people who just lose sight of their diseases and sway on out into those spheres there where they can see Jesus and take his word. May everyone be healed. Grant it, Lord. We'll give the praise and glory to thee. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I've asked tonight, the light's so blary, I, I've prayed, God. How many have seen the picture of the angel of the Lord back there? Just raise your hands. I haven't one here, Biz. Wish I had some more, but we haven't. It's been scientifically tested. I, I'm praying God will let him come visible before this audience tonight. That's the reason I had that light turned out. For instance, if he comes, you'll see there's no shadow. It's, it's him, you see, that he's here. And I want him to do it so bad. And if I've prayed wrong, God forgive me, for he will let as he will. But I have seen times where whole audiences of thousands, 10,000 at one time seen him, coming right down at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and standing over where I was at, when the newspapers flashed it everywhere. And right there in Houston, when my critics standing there making fun, this man and everything, and he had a man to come take his picture and took six of his pictures and so that he could show the people what he looked like while he was holding the debate with my manager. My, at that same time, God came down. And when he taken my picture, all the other man's picture was blank, every one of them. And here when this was taken... Here was the angel of God standing there. They set it into the laboratories in Washington, D.C., and it was copyrighted and went through the greatest test that could be of the greatest George J. Lacey, the greatest man on research there is in America. And he kept it for days and brought it out, his reports on the record there. The first time in all the world's history that a supernatural being was ever photographed, that it's there. So if I never return here again, the testimony that I have testified is proven amongst the church, amongst the scientific re realms, and I have told the truth about Almighty God. That's true. God bless you. Sonny, where are you? All right. What's, what's that letter, Z? I just want to line them up. It's awful crowded. We're going to start from the beginning. Z, 51, for the first five. And we'll take another five, another five, another five, another five. This one, Z, 51... Unto 55. Let them first five stand, then we'll call another number, and then another number, and just keep on like that. Now, I want all of you to be reverent, and I'm asking if the organist will play one of my favorite hymns tonight, if she will. I want you to know I love an organ, and I want her to play, while I'm praying, real low, Abide With Me. And I want all of you to be in the Spirit of God. And I trust that God will send his angel visible tonight before every one of you. And when you see him, and if you do see him, I trust that each one of you will rise to your feet, give God praise. And you've seen me. I just represent him. Just like the pool of water at Bethesda. That pool is not the gift of God. It was just something that the angel of God came on. Is that right? It was not the gift of God. Neither am I God's gift. This, yes. Someone there says, claims that they had seen it already. Amen. Or says, praise the Lord.
to those who believe, and it comes to judgment to those who disbelieve. The mighty God stands in our midst, gave the angel the Lord, stands in the Lord, and the Lord, and the drawn sword. We look unto him who has given life, and who has given life, and who has sent forth his messengers before his presence. The Lord Jehovah speaks, yea, he shall bring forth judgment and righteousness and truth in the earth, for he is the God of the everlasting covenant to remember of his mercy and his covenant unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and to our Father. <laughs> These are unsolicited testimonies. I have nothing. To, I know nothing of them. I never said this. And this is, I understand, right? I'm new amongst Pentecostal people. But if I understand, that's the Holy Ghost speaking and interpreting. Now, I'm going to be honest. I was a critic of that one time. I, I didn't criticize it to people, but in my heart, I couldn't believe it. And the first time after I got started out amongst the Pentecostal people, I was in San Antonio, Texas. I started walking across the platform my first night, and someone up in the gallery spoke with tongues like it was fired from a gun. And another man over here gave the interpretation of it, and that man interpreted exactly the same thing that angel said when he come on me 12 years before that standing in the Ohio River. And I said, do you know me, sir? He said, no, sir. I said, do you know that man? He said, no, sir. That convinced me. And up here at Santa Rosa, not long ago, the minister may be standing present now. There's having a Saturday night a playhouse. We had several people about like here, and they was trying to put a man out of the prayer line. And he kept saying, I'm not wanting in the prayer line. I'm wanting to see this minister. And I said, let him alone down like this. What do you want, sir? And he said, how do you spell your name? And I said, B-R-A-N-H-A-M. He said, mother, that's it. That's it. And a lady came forth. They had an old paper turned yellow. They were evangelists belonging to the Assemblies of God. And 22 years, that would be about, that's four years ago, it would be about 26 years now. 22 years before that, one said they had a gift of speaking in tongues, the other had the gift of interpretation. And when they were, said they were down praying 22 years before that, and the interpretation come, and this was one of their messages they had laying back, said, Thus saith the Lord, in the last days before the coming of the Lord, I'll send my servant William Branham up the west coast. With, and there it was, wrote on old paper. And then one night, I was coming out of Seattle, and there was a man standing over there, and he had a book under his arm. He kept telling me, Brother Branham, you're in the wrong church. And I didn't know what he was talking of. And he put the book under my arm. It was called The Mormon Word of God. I don't know what it was. It's, a, it's one of their prophets, uh, the Latter-day Saint, some bunch of them that claims they see the Neophytes. And, and back there, a hundred and long, I don't know how long ago it was, it, on a certain page there, I had the book in my library, it prophesied their prophet and said that in the last days that Germany would have an a ism called Nazis. And it went ahead and said, In that day let W-I-L-L-I-A-M, William Branham, be called and set aside in humility for the service that I have called him to. That's right. Wrote years. Friends, I stand here for hours saying things that he has done. And please do not think that I'm trying to say this. Here's what I'm That Jesus Christ is in our midst now. He's here to heal everybody. And please, these are Pentecostal people, your own people here is testifying and saying these things, what you have received the Holy Ghost by. Have faith in God. Have faith. This is the hour of your healing. Believe now with all your heart. Z, uh, is it 51 where you give out? Z, 51 to 5. 51, 52, 53, 54, 55. All right. (laughs) All right. Now. Now, and then after that, we're going to call another number somewhere else. And then we'll just keep on till we... Will you stay with me just a little while, will you, and pray? And you people around the walls. Now, I'm going to ask you this. If something happens in the line, and it, it starts... Uh, if, if an insane or an epileptic gets on the platform, and sometimes when they come, they carry on awful. And if it seems to get away from me, and you hear me say, bow your head, do it right away. 
because it'll go from one to another. That's right. I've seen as many as 20 fall with it at one time. It's, it, it'll do it. Do you remember in the Bible where some man went out and he thought he had a gift of healing because he'd seen Paul casting out devils? Acts 19. And he called over a man that had epilepsy fits. He said, uh, I jure thee, but Jesus, who Paul preaches, come out. The devil said, Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you? See? And there he came out. And he went, and the man jumped on, stripped their clothes off of these boys, and they run through the streets naked. Isn't that right? So you have to watch. Now, it goes from, and one time Jesus cast out some demons out of a man from Gadaria, and they went into a herd of swine. Is that right? Demons are powerless unless they're embodied. So they beg for mercy even to go into swines, because Jesus wouldn't permit them in a human body. So now, if you're irreverent, keep your head up, or a critic, remember this, I will not be responsible. But if something happens, and you're irreverent and keep your head bowed, I will be responsible. You can come here, and I could t- uh, God will heal that person. But if you're irreverent, you might come, and it wouldn't go anyhow, see? So you just, I've seen it worked over and over. How many has been in my meetings and seen such things happen? Let's see your hand. All right, there you are. There's, uh, so you just have to be careful. Now just be reverent and pray and believe that God is going to heal. Now I want them to come one at a time till I get real tired. And if I get tired, maybe I'll get me a chair and sit down. And now you all just be reverent and be in prayer. Will you promise me that now? You promise me now that you'll be in prayer and real reverent. All right, sonny boy, bring the lady. Father, we thank thee for thy mercies, for all that you have done for us. We love you with true love in our hearts. And now I'm thinking of the great morning of the resurrection after he went from mortal to immortality. He rose up from the grave. His poor little old disciples scattered about like sheep without a shepherd. Standing by the tomb stood his dear mother weeping. Daylight was breaking. Doves was flying around, cooing. He said, Mary, she recognized him. And Father, you're raised a resurrected Lord among us tonight. May the signs and wonders that you promised be committed tonight. And please, dear Father, hide thy poor humble servant away just now. And if there be someone here just a little critical, as I feel that there is, I pray you forgive that person, Lord. May something be done that will cause them to surrender to thee just now. In the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right. For you, the lady, that's to be prayed for. I, I don't want to be excited a bit tonight. I want to get myself into a place as the anointing comes down. I'll be able to know and to speak to my people. And my mother, you're you're here to be healed. And you want to be well. And you're wanting encouragement for your faith. And something to help you. And I'm going to try, if I can tonight to just speak to the people in order not to touch them till after I see it by a vision or some other way. Because I see so so many claiming they have healing power and they said healing in your hands and things, you know, it's that strong. Now, I just want you to relax yourself and just feel that you're near our Lord. And I feel that I'm near our Lord and I know He's here. And when he comes near, well, he'll speak and, and say what, what is wrong and all about it. And it, you believe now with all your heart? Yes. You accept this as being the truth? I do. You do. Sister, standing near you now is darkness. And you're suffering with a heart trouble. Isn't that right? And you've had a, another ailment. You're extremely nervous too, aren't you, sister? Yes, you are. 
you have get weak quickly, very weak, weak spells like I see them. But you've prayed much about this to be healed. Isn't that true? What do you think of that now? Now, did you hear that voice speaking? That was my voice, but it wasn't me speaking it. That was something else. I heard it. Now, was that the truth, what I told you? Is that the truth? Yes. No way in the world I would know that only through God. Is that right? Now, do you accept me as his servant? I certainly do. All right. Will you obey and do what I tell you to do in the Lord then? Yes. If he'll let me know what has been, he would let me know what will be. Now, you go home and just don't even say you ever had a heart trouble and you're going to get well. well. God bless you, my sister. Now go, and the Lord Jesus bless thee and make thee well. All right. Everyone, everyone be revered and believe with all your heart. Yes, sister, you just might as well walk on a cross. You're healed already before you go. God bless you. God bless you, sister. That's real faith. That's the way to believe. Amen. Everyone just reverent as you can be now. Now, he's near. And he's here to heal and to do. Now, let the lady bring her. Bring her. What do you think, sister? Amen. Isn't he lovely and wonderful? You love him? You've been failing too, haven't you, sister? Suffering. Weakness. You got a nervous heart. That's bothered you, isn't that right? Now I'll tell you something that you might not have known, so that you can see whether this is true or not. You've been having times that you've been getting real weak too, haven't you? And late in the afternoon, isn't that right? And at night, kind of a restless feeling. Isn't that true? It's a tubercular sister. I don't know whether you knew it or not. But it's a, if he's a doctor standing close, knows that's the exact symptoms of tubercular. Come here just a moment. Our Heavenly Father, our little sister has been suffering. She's nervous and upset. But thou art here lovely to bless her and to make her well. And I pray that you will grant it, dear Heavenly Father. Heal her now and make her well as I bless her. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now look here, sister. Do you, you believe, don't you? Yes, I do. And you believe, you know that I have told you truth. Is that yes, right? Yes, amen. I, didn't, I don't take too much time because i got too many to go, you see. Now, I want you to do this. You go and be happy. Try to rest just as much as you can because your nerves is doing a great deal to it. And you're going to be well. Praise you're going to be over. God bless you, sister. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right. She, I don't think she knew that, but that's true. All right, bring the lady. I ever one just as reverent as you can be now. <clears throat> Our sister, you, do you believe that? that I have been truthful and honest about these things. I surely do. You do. Yes, I perceive that you're a good believer. I say that so I can contact or have a conversation with you, see, yes. just to talk to you. And I don't know you. If i ever seen you, I don't know it. But then I'm just trying to enough to I can see what's wrong with you and then and ask God to help you. And... Uh, by that, I just have to keep talking until he takes over. It's near. Now, you're conscious that there's something near you now. Isn't that right? Yes. And just in the last few moments or a few seconds, you begin to feel kind of a sacred awe. Isn't that right? Yes. Now, that is your faith. It's coming in contact with the angel Lord, which is pulling it down on me. See? I, you believe me. Yes. You like to get rid of that tumor, wouldn't you? Yes. Wouldn't you love it? Huh? Do you believe if I'll ask him, you will? Come, sister. Our Heavenly Father, 
I pray thee to be merciful to our sister and to bless her, and may she be healed tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. You also had other things. That was wrong. But you're all right now. God bless you. Let us say praise the Lord. I felt that same spirit move again just at that time. Now, somebody was healed with a tumor at the same time. Now, just a moment. I, 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 friends, I'm not a fanatic. No, sir. Now, if I can find, where is that? Now, everybody just be reverent and just let me watch the audience. I see where it was at, to where the Holy Spirit moved. Just then I knew it left, but I... So many pulling tonight. I trust the God that I've, he's never let me make a mistake on it yet. And if I, there's so many uh, 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 pulling, it's kind of hard when my patient is coming. And um, are, are you waiting for your next? Oh, that's all of them. All right. Uh, 50, what was that? 55. All right. 56, 57, 58, 59, and 60. Let them come. <clears throat> Why? 56. 55 to, or me, uh, Z, pardon me, son. Uh, when the anointing's on, I'm just watching every little move because I don't know just what's going to happen. I have to watch and just be ready for when it happens. While we're waiting, someone out here in the audience, look and believe. Have faith in God and live. I see a lady sitting there with her hands like this, praying with all, her, all the strength that she has to pray with. You believe me, Mother? You believe that God would reveal to me here what's wrong with you and your conditions? I tell you what I want you to do in the next few minutes. I want you just to sit there and pray and say, Dear Jesus, maybe you never got any prayer card or nothing, but I want you just to say, Dear Jesus, I believe with all my heart that our brother has told the truth. And this, what I feel now, is the Holy Spirit moving. Will you believe that? Stand up just a minute so I can get you above the other people. There's so much faith coming in there. She's very safe. Now, this lady here... You see, she has no prayer card or nothing. It's someone standing outside that thinks this is mental telepathy. You have, we have no contact. You want to be well, sister? You accept me as God's prophet with all your heart? The heart trouble has left you, sister. Now you can go home and be well. You're going to get well. That's what was wrong with you, other than you go on. You can be well. Be well. I say, all right. What do you think, sister, sitting next to her? You're disappointed, wasn't you, because you didn't get a prayer card? Isn't that right? But I see there's something wrong with you. You're pending an operation, girl. You knew that, did you? Stand up on your feet just a minute. I've seen a man move before you with a white coat on. Look this way to me. You accept me as God's prophet. You had a tumor, didn't you? You won't need that operation now. Your faith will save you. All right, Billy, bring the lady. Reverend, everyone. Be reverent. Believe with all your heart. Oh, what he could do for you now. Heart, everyone, just reverent as you can be now. How do you do, lady? Do do? Come right this way, if you will. I just want to be close to you. I'm trying to keep conscious to be near this microphone. 
so that when he goes to speaking, I don't know how loud my voice is, so that I will know. See, you have a very straight look, lady. Do you believe the Lord Jesus with all your heart? Yes, I do. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I do. Do you believe me as his servant? Yes, I do. You do. I, I believe that you're telling me truth. And there I see your troubles. You have stomach trouble. Yes, I have. Isn't that right? Yes. It's a, a nervous condition. It's caused the stomach trouble to come on. It's an ulcer. It's right in the bottom of the stomach. You have burn and it's sour in your stomach and so forth, making it a kind of unpleasant. Yes, sir. Isn't that right? And smothers sometime and lay down. It might make your heart flutter because yes, it isn't that right. True. Sometimes you've wondered if it wasn't heart trouble, yes, but it I isn't. Do. But I'm not reading your mind. I'm telling you what is truth. Is that right? I see you raise up in bed sometime, you know, like that. Now, do you believe that God will make you well? Yes, I do. Let me have you. Our Heavenly Father, Thou hast said whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. What you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. I ask Thee to be merciful to our sister and to loose her from this stomach trouble tonight. And may she go and be well. In the name of Jesus Christ, I ask it. Amen. Yes. See, at this time you feel so that you would know. While I was looking on the vision, there's many things seems to be wrong with you. That's true. Isn't it? But, uh, sister dear, it, it, it isn't as much as you think it is. It lays within one thing, oh, and that's your age, you see, for the menopause premature. Go ahead. You're going to be all right now. Go on, eat this, act like you ought to give God praise. Let us say praise be to God, everyone. Have faith in God. Believe him with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. All right, bring the, the person. Now, everyone, just as reverent. How many have just went through the line? Not, not, oh, well, that's all right. Now, if we're just a little late, you all will just be reverent. I don't want to be conscious of that clock, you see. Hi, everybody. Just be reverent. Now, how do you do, sir? Do you believe with all your heart that my prayer would help you get well? You believe that. And you believe that what the angel of God has told me is the truth? You're waiting for me to tell you what's wrong with you. And I'm waiting to know what is wrong with you. Yes, sir. It's in your blood, your bloodstream. Diabetes, I believe, is what you have. Is that right? Yes, sir. Come here just a moment. I, I bless thee, my brother, in the name of Jesus Christ. And God, while the anointing of the Holy Spirit is on thy servant, now I have my hands laid upon him. May the diabetes leave him and never return in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you, my brother. Go and may the Lord be with you and help you. All right. Bring the little the man. I ever one real ever. What you think, he says. Believing with all your heart. Brother dear, my, you're trying to have faith, aren't you, sir? Yes, sir. Would you obey me as God's prophet? I would. You have tried. You've prayed for a long time for the opportunity to come before me, haven't you? And you told someone recently, if I could ever walk before Brother Branham, I would get well. Is that true? Kind of a dark-headed person. Your arthritis leaves you, my brother. You can go home now and you're going to get well. Your faith has made you. God bless you. I ever want reverend. 
be reverent. All right, come ahead with your question. All right. Hey, everyone, real reverent. Just be reverent with all your heart and believe. Now, before I turn my head, this woman's got the same thing because I feel it moving. Just it's, was yours arthritis, sister? You had him. Now go and get well. God bless you, sister. Go and yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make, make it with all. Shut your hands up and down. Like this. That's right. See, I believe with all your heart. How are you all? Her hand was. She made her hand raise back and forth like that. She said, my hand. I said, move it. And there she goes, moving her hand back and forth. Let's say praise the Lord, everybody. All right, come, sister dear. I ever want real forever. Now, how do you do, sister? Uh, there's quite a... Would you just go come this side of me just a little? Thank you, sister. And it merely just to get to talk to you just a moment. You... Suffering, want to be well. You want a full swap with God, isn't that right? And to be healed of your heart and things and trouble that's wrong with you, isn't that right? Will you promise Him if He'll make you well tonight? And besides that, your your sight isn't like it ought to be. You're nearsighted. I see you with a book. You hold them real close to your to you when you're reading. Now that desire of, of walk with God. God is going to grant it to you, and you go and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say praise the Lord, everyone. All right, is that all of that group? All right. Let's have then from, where was, we, where was the line? 60. Let's have the 65. Z, 60, uh, 1, 62, 63, 64, 65. And stand them up. Everybody be real reverent. Have faith in God. And God shall bring it to pass. Do you believe that? Now just a little longer. It's just a few minutes until 10. If you'll just wait. This is my last night here. Please, just everyone, when you move or stir, it just shakes me. Now, I lose the anointing so quickly. I'm very, the Holy Spirit is very timid. How many knows that? Very timid. If you'll just be reverent just a little while longer, I'll dismiss the audience, if you will, because it shakes me so bad. Just be reverent, if you will. All right, everybody reverent, and you bring the man along. Good evening, sir. What do you think of all of this? It's just the truth. And you would love to be made well, wouldn't you? Yes. You've desired it for a long time. Isn't that right? That's right. And you are wanting to know, wondering, is what I'm going to say now. I'm not reading your mind, but I can feel that pulling like that. All right. Will you accept and believe what I tell you? Yes. If I know, you know I know nothing of you, my brother. And if I... Could, if the Holy Spirit, by his servant, will speak and tell you your conditions or so forth, whatever it is, then you'll accept it with all your heart. Isn't that right? There it was, heart trouble. Is that right? Go and get well. Jesus Christ, make you whole. Let's say praise the Lord, everyone. Now. Believe with all your heart. All right. Bring the, the lady. Sister, before I look at you, I want you to come right. You, you just come right around here by my back like this. Uh, I asked some time now I want you to, I want you just to believe with all your heart so it's someone know that said look, you look them in the eye brother Branham <laughs> that doesn't you think I don't know you're saying that <laughs> oh yes I do <laughs> yes I do it's not me it's our heavenly father he knew their thoughts and that's the reason we're covering this up now, sister, dear, you, I'm not looking at your eye, but I want you to ask you something. Do you believe that what I have told is the truth? Yes, I do. All right. You've been suffering with a nervous trouble, haven't you? All right. Go and be well. Jesus Christ maketh thee whole. Go on. Don't think no more about it. Just rejoice and be happy. It's my spiritual yeah. that I came up here for. Him. That's Sorry. exactly it. You are nervous. It's a real nervous condition, and you want to live a close life, and Satan's telling you you can't do it. You go on and do it in the name of the Lord Jesus. Let's say praise the Lord with all of our hearts. All right, bring our brother. All right, now go believe it. See, have faith in God. Now there's a, a colored brother standing by me. 
Can you hear my voice, sir? All right. Now, I don't know you, and you don't know me as far as I know. Have we ever met in life? No, never met in life. There's no way at all for me to know your conditions unless God would show it to me somewhere here. Is that right? All right. I'm going to look to my Heavenly Father and your Heavenly Father and ask Him to help me to help you to have more faith. And you believe me, do you, sir? Do you accept me as God's prophet? You do. I see you, sir, trying to move from the bed. You're stiff, either crippled. No, you have arthritis. Is that right, sir? Go and be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. I see it. Amen. Let us say praise the Lord, everyone. You believe with all your heart? All right. Bring the next patient, son. Everyone reverent. I've seen the man. He gets... He, he almost got crippled here not long ago. He stepped off or something and hurt himself, and I didn't know just what it was. And then I seen him again when he started to move from the bed. He started rubbing himself like this. I knew it was arthritis. All right. Now here stands, I believe the patient's standing by me. Is that right, Brother Hall? All right. The lady's here. All right. Lady, do you believe me as God's servant? The lady here, do, do you believe me? You do. Come up a little closer, will you, sister? Up a little closer this way. You believe me as God's servant? Do you believe that God is able to show to me what is wrong with you? Yes, you do. Well, sister dear, I want you to accept me now as your brother and as God's servant. And you're suffering for some, yes? You are suffering with a real nervous condition that's due to a time past of menopause. Also, for that, you have a kidney trouble that causes a burning in the kidney. Uh, you have uh, that, and you have a, an outstanding female trouble. It's almost gone into a cancer. You have female troubles, isn't that right, sister? You believe, is that true? All right. Do you believe that I am God's servant? And if I shall ask him, you'll get well? Receive your healing, my sister. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you'll be made well. All right, everybody. All right. Come, honey. Oh. Your eyes. Is your eyes that right? How long have you been? Long time. Will you come right here and just lean your head against the table? Almighty God, offer of life. Touch this child, Lord. Thou can heal her and make her well. Thou spirit that's done this evil on this child's eyes, I adjure thee to leave her. In the name of Jesus Christ, come out from the child. Look here, honey. Look straight at me. Now look right this way. Your eyes are normal. Straight. Can you see me good now? You're all right? Now you can look around at her. Her eyes are as straight and normal as they can be. And she's healed and well. God bless you, honey. You go and be well in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us say praise the Lord. You believe with all your heart. Now, how many? We got up to 60-something, haven't we? Let's re let me call just somebody out of the audience. Just some of the other. Just call card after card. We won't have to take them routinely like that. 60. Let's... Uh, does it go to a hundred, son? Who's got prayer card 70? Let's see, prayer card 70. Is it here? Let's call 80. If Where? Oh, it's, it's coming. Oh, I beg your pardon. Would you let me sit down just a minute? I'm getting very weak. If you were, all right. Just a moment, sister. It would be, see, I have to wait just as you come. Just be in line, and so I can wait. Bring me a chair and let the lady sit down, if you will. I just want to rest just and a I'll little bit. I'll drop this now, down. You... Uh, that's all right. I'm getting awful weak. Yeah, I'll drop it down for you. Sir. How do you do, sister? Uh, are you a believer, sister? I am. All right. Now, I just want to rest just a little bit. I get so... Wait, I speak to this audience just a minute. Uh, audience, 
don't, don't think anything wrong. I, I just get real weak, and my, my face is so numb, it feels like my lips are that thick, and I, I just can't stand up under that very long, you see, and I, I just must sit down a minute. You all will forgive me for a minute. I, you, you might not understand it, just if I can talk just a moment. See, these are visions, friends. And the prophet Daniel saw one vision, and he said he was troubled at his head for several days. Is that right? Well, just look at the visions that are coming along now. And it, 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 it just take Jesus, a woman, touched his garment. Those people have faith who come here. And she touched his garment, and he said, I perceive that virtue. Well, what is virtue? Virtue is your strength. Is that right? Strength went from him. Once I didn't know what it was, someone was trying to tell me. I said, I'm ashamed of myself getting weak. He said, Brother Brandon, that's virtue. Well, my education is poor. I didn't know what virtue meant. I thought it was something pertaining to Jesus, and I wouldn't say it. And then I looked it up, and it said, your strength. So I, I, I knew then that that's really what it was, truthfully. My strength just comes so depleted that I can hardly stand up. And my lips, my mouth feels real strange because it's not me it's the angel of the lord speak has anyone got that picture here near or the picture of the angel of the lord that they would just uh, here's one right here i would like for the audience who did never see it some of you with your picture would just hold it behind you so that one behind you could see it and it's that is what's doing the speaking now could i have it sonny boy there it is as Brother Brown explained to me that the power of God just takes right a hold of his both organs and lips and tongue and speaks right through him. I have nothing to do with this, friend. I'm a man like the rest of you are. Now, there it is. That's the one that at the government, the best research in the United States has had this picture before it could be published out like this, and it's truth. There it is with the sign George J. Lacey behind it from the the best and there is in the research in, a, in America. Thank you, and give that back to the correct person. Now, I just want to rest just a moment, and then we'll talk to our sister. And yes, thank you. Uh, this is not at all some because that I am weak in body. It is not. I'm strong in body. I won the Bantamweight Championship a few years ago in boxing. I can walk 35 miles any day over any kind of country, get up and do it the next day. It's just very weak. Passed the physical examination recently, a perfect examination at Mayo Brothers. And it's not that. But one of those visions will take more strength from me in 10 hours with a sledgehammer. That's right. Now, this lady here. She's just a prayer card. We'll call some more if the Lord will permit us. And you got the... A little too yes, close. Yes, sir. Well, sister dear, I'm happy that you got the prayer card. And I, I trust that, that something will be done that our Lord will glorify His Son, Christ Jesus, between us that not only to you but to the people out there in the audience that they might see and be healed also now we are perfect strangers yes. I, I do not know you and I I don't think you know me No, no you might have heard of me now, what I'm wanting to do is just to contact your spirit. And there's so many uh, people out in there pulling. Now, I don't think they hear us. I, I'm, I don't think they do because there's some interference in the... Uh, they may be now. now. I'm not sure. I can't say whether they do or not. But I want you to just talk to me. And I want you to answer me. And now... You, if we've never met in life, don't know nothing about each other. You were given a prayer card, and 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 uh, you got the card, or have you got it, or did you give it to somebody down there? 
to keep you lined up here so you could be called. Okay. Probably if you hadn't had that number, you might not have been called. And again, you might have been called like some of those yeah. along there who didn't yeah. have prayer cards yeah. and was called. Okay. Now, you, you may think that I'm just stalling for time. I'm not. Oh. I'm, I'm trying to get into the Spirit of God. And you're, you're a believer. Yeah. I perceive that you are a yeah. Christian now. And you're deep in trouble, sister. Yes, I am. You, you have, you're suffering. You must. I do. Sir. You, yes, it's cancer. I had cancer. Yes, ma'am. And you've, uh, say, you're, you're a stranger here. That's right. You've come a long way. Yes. You're from a large city where these hardwood grows. Isn't that right? That's right. From there, isn't there a, a lake or... Let, let me say Chicago. Would that be right. about right? That's Evanston, right. No, All right, no. sir. You go back to Chicago and forget you were ever sick. Oh, You're oh. going home to be a well woman, my, my sister dress here. Will be yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, A miracle. You, I said if I ever got to you, Brother Bram, and that God could put back the, the, the girls that they came God to bless you, my sister, and go. Now, she's just a little weak because the vision was... Strong up on All right. Uh, let's see. Where did where I called another one? You called eighty up here. Oh, I called. What did I did I call another one? Oh, oh. Well, okay. Bring her. Good evening, sister. Good evening, brother Brandon. Do you believe yes. with all your heart? Yes. You're a very fine person. But you've had a lot of trouble, haven't you, sister? You got an inward trouble now, isn't that right? Yes. Say You've just went to recently an operation, haven't you? Yes. Two doctors. I see a thin-looking man. Somebody was very friendly. One man seems to have a little gray hair tipping. Yes. Isn't that right? Yes. I believe it was the. I believe he was in his office. I see a lot of little tools laying to the side. Is that true? Yes. And I believe that was a gallstone operation or something, wasn't it, or something—the gallbladder or. I had a gallbladder yes, operation, but that same. wasn't the last one, the recent one. You've had another one. I yes. see that. It must have been tumor or something. Yes. Isn't that right? Tumor is right. Ghost sister, you're in oh. trouble. Oh. 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 You're going to be well. God bless you, my sister. Go and be well. Oh. Oh. Let's uh, call one more. Just call. What was it? What call? Call. Uh, let's call ninety. Just call ninety. Then call the prayer card. Z. Prayer card Z ninety. Come for And then we'll we'll call a line. Or something. Thank you. Good evening, sir. <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> He's lovely, isn't he? Yes, sir. He's very lovely, Lord. And one time when he was here on earth, he was uh, he was God manifested in the flesh, and he went about doing good, healing people. And he sat down on a rock one time by a well and began to talk to a woman. And he told her that what, what her conditions was. And he had no way of knowing, only as his father would reveal it to him. You believe that, sir? One night... Maybe this time of night he's set up on, maybe his picture shows that sometime 
up on top of the building. It was a Jewish custom or an Oriental custom. And he talked to a man one night by the name of Nicodemus. Told him, except a man be born again, he cannot enter the kingdom. Is that true? Now, I'm just talking words, brother, to see how the inspiration is coming, you see, to find what my Heavenly Father would want to tell you. And you've come tonight as a perfect stranger to me, my brother. I, I don't know you, uh, and you don't know me as far as I know, unless it's just by hearing of me or something. And now I'm here to represent our Lord Jesus. And you and I are just man sitting here. And there's perhaps something wrong with you. I don't know just what at this time. But our Lord Jesus promised tonight that he would send these things down to us in this day. And we would be, could use them for his glory. Is that true? My brother, you're, you're aware that something's happening now, don't you? There's something taking place right now. Isn't that marvelous when you feel that contact? Now the Spirit is coming on me and it's coming on you. And before we go under it, let the audience might know that I'm telling the truth. Raise your hand to them. Isn't that right? A feeling of reverence. Isn't that right? Not like you want to shout, but if anything you want to cry, is that reverence? The anointing of this is different. Now, I shuck it just a little. Now, if there's anything in the world that I'd ever know of you, my brother, will have to be coming from God. Is that right? <coughs> well, brother, dear, you, you are suffering. And... You're very nervous, awfully nervous, and that nervousness is caused by prostrate trouble that you have. Isn't that right? You have a weakness of the kidneys also. Is that a truth? And brother, I see a, a doctor before you. You've just been examined, and I believe you're up for an operation. Isn't that right? You're figuring on an operation right away. Say, I see, oh, you've made preparations for something else. You've just been saved, too, just converted. It's been recently because you had on that same suit of clothes. Isn't that right? Well, don't you fear for your operation, brother. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, has made a preparation for you. That his blessing may rest upon thee, my brother, all the days that I've don't you worry, brother. You'll be all right and be make huh? for just a moment. Now let's let's see someone here who don't have prayer cards. Have faith. Believe with all your heart. Have you believed on the Lord Jesus? Just as far in here as you can go. Believe. I see a lady sitting there, right here. She's suffering with the anemia condition. Isn't that right, lady? On the end of the seat there. True anemia? Yes, ma'am. That is right. I'll try the one next to her. Let the young lady look this way, sitting next to her. Do you believe, young lady, with all your heart? Believe that Jesus Christ will make you well? All right. You stand up a little bit so I can see you just a little. Raise. Yes, it's you there with the. You believe now? Oh, yes. It's a nervous condition, isn't it, sister? In a female trouble. All right. You go and be healed. The Lord Jesus make you well with all the heart ever. I've seen something move. Why, it's the lady sitting right here. Can you have two more also, sister? 
go across the platform. Amen. Receive your healing. God bless you, sister. Amen. Go now with all your heart to get well. Let us say, Brother Cain and I are watching the card. Everything is checking perfectly. Well, I don't. Them cards hasn't got nothing to do with it. I don't know what them people put on their cards. If you believe with all your heart, you can be healed without a card. God will tell you what's wrong with you, regardless of whether you have a card or not. How many believes that with all your heart? Amen. Just be reverent everywhere. We must be reverent. To get right with God. Try along in here. Aren't you trying, somebody in there trying to give up a habit or something? Right. I see a vision of a lady, and she's standing before me. I don't know where she's at. But a lady that's trying to give up a habit, that's trying to, she's a cigarette smoker. Isn't it you, sister? Stand on your feet. God has freed you from that now. God bless you, sister. All right. You shall have your deliverance. Amen. Praise be to the Lord Jesus. Look this away. Somebody down in here. What about the lady over here and the cop? Stretchers down there, whatever it is. The whole crowd's getting misty to me now. I'm trying to speak. I hope you hear me. A lady and a cop or stretcher, whatever you are. Look this away and believe me as God's prophet. Do you believe me as God's prophet? You see you're without your cards and things, and you believe that God is able to make me known uh, to, to, to me what's wrong with you? Yes. You're suffering with something wrong in your throat. Isn't that right? Don't you spit up blood or something? I see with a, a plate, something in front of you with blood on it. Is that right? Not only that, you're refusing food. You have a stomach trouble too. Isn't that right? Well, why don't you stand on your feet and Jesus Christ will make you well. Stand up. Amen. I, I wonder who else would want to be healed at this time. How many of you wants to believe me as God's prophet? You want me to, I can tell you what's wrong with you. Who wants to be and believe on the Lord Jesus at this time? Around through the building. Oh my, it's getting mixed up now. So I seen a cancer move just then. I believe it's right behind us. Either this man here that... No, I believe it's the lady with the green dress on back there. Didn't you have cancer, sister? All right, you can go home now. God bless you. Ever... Ever one reverend? Just, just a minute. Have faith. I'm trying to see this young lady here for something. She, she's wanting something, and I can't tell just what it is from here. How many wants to believe with all your heart? Is our Lord Jesus present to heal? Is our Lord Jesus here to make well everybody in the audience? Will you accept me as his prophet, his servant, I mean, his servant? Will you believe me as his servant? What about you, lady, young lady in the wheelchair and all along there? Will you accept this as true? Will you now do this for me and for your own good? Will you raise your hand and say, Lord, by your grace right now, I will accept you as my healer, and from the, this day hence, I shall never testify of nothing else but of my healing? Will you promise that? How many will do that? Raise up your hands. I will never, from this day on, I'll never, no matter what happens, I've seen your spirit, 
and I, I believe that, that, you're, that you're here, and I believe that, that, that if Brother Branham will ask God right now that you will, that you will grant the healing of my body, do you promise that? With one hand over your heart and the other up in the air, I want you to make a committal at this time, inside and out, to our Lord Jesus Christ. I just at one accord, are you ready to settle this once forever? I don't know anything more our Master can do. If you're ready to settle it forever, then raise your hand and repeat this prayer after me, every person. Almighty God, I believe in you as God the Father, and I believe in Jesus Christ as thy Son, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, and I now believe that he is present to heal me of my disease and affliction. Now I come, Lord Jesus. I am leaving here testifying of my healing and go to glorify you for it. I shall praise thee for healing until I am perfectly delivered. Almighty God, now hear the prayer of your servant. Oh, Father, if we found favor in your sight, as I stand here tonight where gallant man has stood, this audience, they're blessed. They have now committed themselves to you. And if I have found favor with you, my Father, hear the prayer of your humble servant. Oh, God, you know my heart. You know how I feel just now. Give me faith, Lord God, faith, predominating faith. Grant it, Lord, in this audience, may you sweep over here with a great whirlwind of blessings upon their heart just now. Satan, you who bound these people in these chairs, on crutches, deaf, dumb, cancers, heart trouble, I adjure thee by Jesus, the Son of God, Come out of these people. Come out and leave them go. In the name of Jesus Christ, leave them. God, we praise you just now for your healing power. Let the audience give out a shout like they did at the gates of Jericho and the walls fall down. Let the cripples stand up. Let the blind people stand to their feet. All the sick and the afflicted be healed. Praise you, Jesus.